Welcome to section 40 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Helicobacter pylori, or simply H. pylori, which you can see right here. This scene will take place in the dirty room of a careless adolescent. Like most adolescents, he's left a dirty pile of clothes on the floor. Pile sounds like pylori. So this dirty pile of clothes is here to help you remember that this image is all about H. pylori. Before we go any further, pay close attention to the walls. Yep, that's right, we've intentionally made them pink to help you remember that this is a gram-negative organism. Now we've added his stepdad to the scene, who is a very strict military guy. Look at those military boots and that ammo belt strapped around his waist. He doesn't appear to be very pleased with the state of his stepson's room, as you can probably tell by the way he has his arms folded and the upset appearance on his face. In any case, if you look closely at his face, you can see that he has a mustache, which, just like in the last several videos, is here to help you remember that H. pylori is a curved bacillus. Next, notice that we've shown a flag on the wall. After all, the stepdad is in the military, so he's quite patriotic and likes to hang up flags on the walls of his home. The flag is here to help you remember that H. pylori is flagellated, which also means that the organism is modal. This is a hematoxylin and eosin, or H and E stain of the gastric mucosa. If you look at the center of the image, you can see little curved bacilli right here. Notice that the organisms are right next to the gastric mucosa. The organisms in this particular stain may not be as pink or red as you'd expect because it's an H and E stain, not a gram stain. However, we've shown this image because an organism directly adjacent to the gastric mucosa is pathognomonic for H. pylori. So this is often used on tests as a way to test your knowledge of H. pylori rather than a gram stain. It's also worthwhile noting that an H and E stain is not as reliable as other specialized stains. So you may also see silver-based stains or other types of staining methods. This is an image of a silver-based stain. This is a different organism in a different sample of tissue. However, the yellow colors and the general feel of the image is what's most important for you to recognize. So remember, if you see curved bacilli adjacent to the gastric mucosa, you're dealing with H. pylori, regardless of whether or not the organism appears pink under the microscope. To help you remember this silver-based stain, we've shown a silver plate with some silverware on it. After all, this kid is pretty dirty, so it makes sense that he doesn't clean up after himself, even when he eats. He just leaves the plates on the ground. So silver plate with silverware on it for H. pylori can be diagnosed using silver-based staining methods. As you can see, we've added antlers to the wall as another decoration. Antlers sounds like antrum, so we've shown it here to help you remember that H. pylori colonizes the antrum. This is an image of the stomach which we showed in our anatomy and physiology videos. I'm showing it to you here to help you recall that the antrum is right here. So this bottom portion of the stomach right here. All right, remember the dirty pile of clothes on the ground? Well, the family's pet cat seems to enjoy this cozy spot. So you can see that the cat is sitting on the pile of clothes. Just like in our other images, the cat is here to help you remember that H. pylori is catalase positive. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test, which we covered in more detail in section seven, which is our video on Listeria monocytogenes. Recall that the bubbles right here indicate that the organism is catalase positive. Also notice that there is a yellow streak of urine on top of the pile of clothes. I guess the cat decided that this spot is also its litter box. Anyway, the urine is here to help you remember that H. pylori is urease positive. We covered this test in section 16, which is our video on staph epidermidis, but recall that the pink color in the test tube right here indicates that the organism is urease positive. Recall that the stomach is normally very acidic, which prevents the survival of many pathogens. However, because H. pylori is urease positive, it can produce the basic compound ammonia, which creates an alkaline environment within the stomach and allows the organism to survive. So remember, H. pylori is urease positive. Now we've added the kid's mom to the scene who is vacuuming up the mess. As you can see, she's wearing a blue necklace, which is here to help you remember that H. pylori is oxidase positive. This is an image of the oxidase test, which we covered in more detail in section 20, which is our Neisseria overview video. Recall that the blue or purple color right here indicates that the organism is oxidase positive. All right, now let's turn our attention to this boy's bed. Aren't you jealous of that comfy looking bed with a nice big dip in the center for extra back support? It also looks like he hasn't cleaned his blanket in a while, so there's a big red stain on it. Anyway, the red colored inward dip resembles a peptic ulcer that erodes into the mucosa. So this is here to help you remember that H. pylori causes peptic ulcer disease. You probably noticed this already, but you can see that this kid doesn't have very polite manners. He's passing gas, as you can tell by the gross green cloud. Anyway, gas cloud sounds like gastritis. So we've shown this gassy kid here to help you remember that H. pylori can cause chronic gastritis. If you look closely at this boy's shirt, you'll notice that he has the cancer hope ribbon symbol that we've used in some prior videos to represent cancer. He likes to wear this because his actual father passed away from cancer and he wears it often to remember him. 
As you can tell, he doesn't get along too well with his stepdad. Anyway, the gas represents gastritis, and the cancer hope ribbon represents cancer. So together, this should help you remember that H. pylori can cause gastric carcinoma. Also notice that he's holding a malt shake, which sounds like malt lymphoma, and is here to help you remember that H. pylori can cause malt lymphoma. Malt stands for mucosa-associated lymphoid tissue, and this type of lymphoma is a cancer that originates from B cells and affects the gastric tissue. Next, notice that the kid is burping. This gross green burp cloud is here to help you remember the word breath and that H. pylori can be diagnosed with a urease breath test. If we go back to the urease test, you can see that H. pylori can convert urea into carbon dioxide and ammonia via the urease enzyme. So the urease breath test exploits this ability by giving the patient a carbon isotope of urea by mouth. If H. pylori is present in the stomach, then once the isotope reaches the stomach, the organism will produce labeled CO2, which can then be detected in a breath sample. All right, with this in mind, let's continue discussing the image. Remember how the mom was vacuuming up the dirty floor? Well, the vacuum is a type of pump. So we've shown it here to help you remember that H. pylori can be treated with proton pump inhibitors. Also remember the ammo belt around the strict military stepdad? We've included this here to help you remember that H. pylori should also be treated with amoxicillin. Finally, we've shown a clarinet leaned up against the desk because clarinet sounds like clarithromycin. So clarithromycin should also be used to treat H. pylori. In summary, H. pylori should be treated with what's known as triple therapy. And this includes amoxicillin, clarithromycin, and a proton pump inhibitor. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 27-year-old male with a history of chronic arthritis is brought to the emergency department after an episode of syncope which occurred an hour ago. He quickly regained consciousness but has felt lightheaded since that time. Additional history reveals that he began having black tarry stools several days ago. His temperature is 37 degrees Celsius, pulse is 120 per minute, and blood pressure is 80 over 60. This patient's condition is most likely caused by which of the following? A. Helicobacter pylori, B, NSAID use, C, alcohol use, or D, hypertriglyceridemia. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has a history of chronic arthritis. This is a subtle way of telling you that the patient has chronic pain. He also had an episode of syncope, black tarry stools, and is tachycardic and hypotensive. Collectively, these clues are highly suggestive of an upper GI bleed due to a peptic ulcer. The blood in the gastrointestinal tract explains the change in stool color, and the syncope, tachycardia, and hypotension can be explained by anemia and hypovolemia due to blood loss. So with this in mind, the correct answer is B, NSAID use. You may have been tempted to choose choice A because, after all, this lecture is about Helicobacter pylori. However, gastric ulcers have two major causes, chronic H. pylori infections and chronic NSAID use. The fact that this patient has a history of chronic arthritis is highly suggestive of chronic NSAID use, resulting in peptic ulcer disease. Additionally, the question stem provided no information about laboratory tests that would suggest H. pylori, so we can be confident that the correct answer is B. From the image, recall that the red, dirty bed that dips inward, right here, is here to help you remember that H. pylori can cause peptic ulcer disease. However, if a patient presents with a bleeding ulcer, beware of immediately thinking that the patient has an H. pylori infection. You must also consider other causes, such as chronic NSAID use. So like we discussed already, A is incorrect. C is incorrect because while high concentrations of alcohol may damage the gastric mucosal barrier, there is no evidence that alcohol causes peptic ulcer disease. So C is incorrect. D is suggestive of pancreatitis, which would present with extreme epigastric abdominal pain, not black tarry stools and hypovolemia. So D is incorrect. So again, the correct answer is B, NSAID use. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know about H. pylori.